Proper care and maintenance of the M1 rifle requires some general disassembly referred to as a field strip. This includes disassembly into the three main groups. These are the barrel and receiver group, the trigger housing group, and the stock group. The barrel and receiver group is then disassembled further. This can be accomplished by using only the combination tool. Ensuring the rifle is unloaded and safe is the first step to any disassembly or maintenance. To disassemble the rifle into the three main groups, grasp it with the left hand so that the base of the trigger housing is included in the grip. Place the rifle butt against the left thigh, sights to the left. With the thumb and forefinger of the right hand, pull downward and outward on the trigger guard, swing the trigger guard out as far as it will go, and then lift out the trigger housing group. A cleaning rod may be used to assist in pulling out the trigger guard if necessary. For the remaining two groups, with the left hand, grasp the rear of the receiver and raise the stock. With the right hand, give a downward blow, grasping the small of the stock. This will separate the two groups. The rifle is now disassembled into the three main groups. To disassemble the barrel and receiver group, Place it on a table with the sights down, muzzle pointing to the left. Locate the follower rod. With the thumb and forefinger of the left hand, grasp the follower rod and disengage it from the follower arm by moving it toward the muzzle. Lifting up on the follower assembly may be necessary. Then remove the follower rod and operating rod spring by withdrawing them to the right. Do not separate these parts. Using the drift of the combination tool or the point of a dummy cartridge, push out the follower arm pin from the far side of the receiver toward the body. Grasp the bullet guide, follower arm, and the operating rod catch assembly, and lift them out of the receiver together. Separate and arrange these parts from left to right in the following order. Follower arm, operating rod catch assembly, and bullet guide. This will help in remembering how they are reassembled. Reach down into the receiver and lift out the follower assembly. Do not separate the slide from the follower. Turn the barrel and receiver group over so that the sights are up, muzzle pointing away from the body. With the left hand, raise the rear of the group. With the right hand, pull the operating rod to the rear until the rear of the handle is directly under the forward edge of the windage knob. Grasp the handle with the thumb and forefinger of the right hand, and with an upward and outward pressure, disengage the guide lug of the operating rod through its dismount notch on the receiver. Remove the operating rod. It should be noted the operating rod is bent intentionally so that it will not bind against the enlarged portion of the barrel. Do not attempt to straighten it. Grasp the bolt by the operating lug, and while sliding it from rear to front, lift it upward and outward to the right front with a slight rotating motion. If necessary, the bolt may be disassembled. To disassemble the bolt, hold it in the left hand with the operating lug to the right so that the little finger is under the tang of the firing pin and the thumb is over the ejector. This is important because the ejector may fly out and become lost if it is not held with a thumb. Insert the screwdriver blade of the combination tool between the extractor and the lower cartridge seat flange. Twist the screwdriver blade against the extractor and unseat it. The ejector will snap up against the left thumb. Remove the extractor. and then the extractor spring and plunger.
lift out the ejector and ejector spring. Remove the firing pin from the rear of the bolt. Do not separate the ejector from its spring nor the extractor plunger from its spring. The bolt is now fully disassembled. If necessary, the gas cylinder can be removed. Using the screwdriver blade of the combination tool, unscrew and remove the gas cylinder lock screw with valve assembly. The gas vent and the gas cylinder lock screw will need to be compressed to fully seat the screwdriver blade. Then unscrew and remove the gas cylinder lock. The gas cylinder can then be removed. Loosen the gas cylinder by tapping lightly toward the muzzle on the bayonet stud with a piece of wood or similar soft object. Remove the gas cylinder, taking care not to burr or damage the splines. Do not remove or attempt to adjust the front sight. The front handguard is removed by sliding it forward over the muzzle. Do not attempt to remove the rear handguard. With the rifle field stripped, it can be properly cleaned and then reassembled. Further disassembly of the rifle is covered in a separate training film. Assembly of the rifle is the reverse of disassembly. Replace the front handguard by sliding it over the muzzle and ensure that it is seated on the front band. To replace the gas cylinder, Make sure that the splines on the inside are lined with the grooves on the barrel as the gas cylinder is placed over the barrel. Replace the gas cylinder as far as it will move easily. If tapping is necessary, tap lightly on the bayonet stud with a piece of wood. Then engage the threads of the gas cylinder lock with those on the barrel and screw it on by hand until it is finger tight. Do not use a tool. If the lock is not aligned with the gas cylinder, do not force it, but unscrew it until it is aligned. The gas cylinder lock screw can then be replaced. Tighten by hand. Then ensure it is tight by using the screwdriver blade of the combination tool. Keep the screw tight at all times, because a loose gas cylinder lock screw may prevent the rifle from firing semi-automatically. To assemble the bolt, insert the firing pin in the rear of the bolt, making sure the tang of the firing pin enters its slot. Grasp the bolt in the left hand with the face of the bolt upward ensuring the firing pin does not fall out of the back and the operating lug is to the right. Replace the ejector and the ejector spring into the bolt with the ejector spring down. Turn the ejector so that the cut is toward the operating lug of the bolt. Replace the extractor spring and plunger, spring first, into their hole in the bolt. Put the stud of the extractor into its hole in the bolt. With the left thumb, Press lightly on the extractor so that it begins to ride over the extractor plunger. To seat the extractor, the extractor seating device and the combination tool may be used. Place the drift of the combination tool in the left groove of the bolt and hold the combination tool at a right angle to the locking and operating lugs of the bolt. Press downward on the combination tool until the ejector is forced into the face of the bolt. Then. With the left thumb, press inward on the extractor, seating it. 
The bolt is now assembled. The soft lead end of the chamber cleaning brush or the point of a dummy or live cartridge can also be used in the same manner as the combination tool. Caution. When assembling the bolt, be careful to keep your face away from over the bolt because the ejector might fly out from under the tool that you are using. To replace the bolt, place the barrel and receiver with the sights up and muzzle pointing away from you. Hold the bolt by the operating lug so that the front end of the bolt is slightly above and to the right of its extreme forward position in the receiver. Insert the rear end in its bearing on the bridge of the receiver. Rotate the bolt in a counterclockwise direction as far as necessary to permit the tang and the firing pin to clear the top of the bridge. Guide the left locking lug of the bolt into its groove on the left side of the receiver. Lower the right locking lug on its bearing and slide the bolt to its rearmost position. Tilt the barrel and receiver to the left. Then, holding the operating rod at the handle, place the head of the piston into the gas cylinder about 3 eighths of an inch. Adjust the operating rod so that the recess in the hump fits over the operating lug of the bolt. While applying pressure downward and inward on the handle, Move the operating rod forward until the guide lug is engaged in its groove. Move the bolt forward until it is closed. Turn the barrel and receiver group so that the sights are down. Taking the follower, slide down. Replace the follower assembly so that its guide ribs fit into their grooves in the receiver. The square hole in the follower to the rear. The slide will now rest against the bolt. With the left hand, replace the bullet guide so that the shoulders of the bullet guide fit into their slots in the receiver and so that the hole on the toe of the bullet guide is in alignment with the holes in the receiver. With the right hand, swing up the lower part of the bullet guide slightly. With the left hand, insert the long rear arm or the operating rod catch assembly through the clearance cut in the bullet guide. Make sure that the rear of the long arm is underneath the front stud of the clip latch which projects into the receiver. Lower the bullet guide into place. To test for correct assembly, press down on the front arms of the operating rod catch. When released, they should spring back into place. Replace the follower arm by passing its studded end through the bullet guide and inserting the studs in the grooves in the follower. Place the forked end of the follower arm astride the toe of the bullet guide. Align the holes in the operating rod catch, follower arm, and bullet guide with those in the receiver. Replace the follower arm pin. Insert the operating rod spring into the operating rod. Grasp the follower rod with the fingers of your left hand, making sure that the hump of the follower rod is toward the barrel. Push toward the muzzle, compressing the operating rod spring. Hook the claws of the follower rod with the front studs of the follower arm. You may have to raise the follower assembly a little to do this. Check to see that the hump of the follower rod is in the slot between the forward arms of the operating rod catch assembly. The straight part of the follower rod will then be parallel to the barrel. The three main groups can now be assembled. With the barrel and receiver group on the table, sights down, pick up the stock group and locate the U-shaped flange at the stock ferrule. Hold the stock so that the sling swivels are up. Engage this U-shaped flange into the lower band. Then lower the stock group down onto the barrel and receiver group. Unlatch and open the trigger guard. Keeping the base of the trigger guard housing level, place it straight down into the receiver making sure that the locking lugs on the trigger guard enter the recesses in the receiver. Close and latch the trigger guard. The rifle is now assembled. To function check the rifle, pull the operating rod to its rearmost position. 
The bolt should stay open. Close the bolt and snap the safety into its locked position. Squeeze the trigger. The hammer should not fall. Push the safety forward and squeeze the trigger. The hammer should fall. The next film in this series will cover loading and unloading. Thanks for watching. If you found this video interesting or helpful, go ahead and give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. If you would like to support the channel, a link to our Patreon page is in the description. For more information on this firearm and others, head on over to historyandfirearms.com.